Welcome to FixItForgetIt.com Where projects and ideas come together Hi, this is John Leffler from FixItForgetIt.com This is a three video series where we are going to look at installing PVC posts repairing vinyl siding and installing PVC handrails in this third video in this series we are going to look at installing PVC handrails and this material is made by a company called USA Vinyl and these posts and rails are under the brand name Weatherables so let's get started on this third video and see some of the things that we dealt with in installing these handrails and if you haven't seen my second video yet on repairing vinyl siding and repairing holes and cracks that is a video that you may want to go check out this was busted up in here had some holes and cracks in there I repaired those turned out great so you can see in that second video in this series how to do that for yourself thanks for stopping by and let's get started I'm getting ready to install the rail system on this small porch so I have a four foot rail here that I'm gonna split in two put half on each side this these caps and everything dried up real nicely that's this very secure I really like the quality of this rail system it's really a, an attractive rail they have mounting brackets and screws and to me I thought the screws looked like a coated screw or aluminum but the directions say they're stainless steel so I probably will use some of these screws so you have the upper rail the spindles bottom rail and a little toe, toe bar here whatever you want to call it, it goes on the bottom uh, because I have real short rails over here I'm probably not going to even use that something else I really like about weatherables quality they have this aluminum H channel that inserts into that top rail that'll really make that nice and strong these brackets will just be mounted right on here and of course over on the wall they have top and bottom brackets that's the bottom screws and everything come with it I do want to mention something that you might want to keep in mind if you have vinyl siding and you're going to be installing a rail system see how big that is that will not fit number one number two because the vinyl kicks backward at an angle that puts this bracket heading uphill obviously you don't want that the way I overcame that is they have these nice stairway rail systems so this is really for a stairway but let me get that off of there when you check this out you get two advantages with this first of all the footprint fits nicely on the vinyl and that allows this top to tilt back down so that it comes straight out so I'm gonna have two rails coming from the house out to the posts and uh, right over there and that is going to allow me to install that properly something else I really like about weatherables is they really think of everything uh, they have 
for these brackets there are little white plugs in here that will cover the screws and for these brackets that are going to be installed on the vinyl once you get these installed they have these little beauty caps that will clip right over there and cover that up so I think it's a real nice system very happy with it one of the great things about PVC is you don't have to worry about it rotting it's less susceptible to mold and mildew that sort of thing the downside is it can scuff and scratch up especially when you're handling it around a saw and scooting it back and forth measuring that sort of thing so you may want to consider just getting some duct tape wrapping the deck of uh, your saw your cutting deck with duct tape just put a couple of rows on here down on the deck and up on the back here that way when you have your material up in there cutting it you're much less likely to scuff scratch and scar it could save you a lot of wet sanding on this small porch railing I ran into a little problem it's a manufacturing issue I don't know if you can see it but there's a, a little ghosty gray line right across this rail and it's a bit unsightly that is right in the PVC coating on this should look like this should be just nice and white so I contacted Weatherables and their customer service is really good customer service rep is fantastic they quickly sent me out a replacement rail problem is kind of same thing that I have run into quite a bit I don't know if these will show up but there are scuffs and scratches and uh, smears and smudges and this is more than just a little bit of surface dirt that will just wipe off these are you know there's some little gouges and scratches in here so I'm gonna have to spend quite a bit of time once again doing wet sanding I love the look of their stuff I love the quality love the customer service the biggest downside that they seem to have to me they really need to take the team aside that's doing material handling and tell them you're not stacking logs you know you're handling PVC <laughs> which of course scuffs up quite easily they're just not being careful with the handling on this stuff so that's a little disappointing um, but again it's worth it to me to put in the extra effort to have the look that I'm after and the quality that I'm after I just wish that they would spend a little more time and be a little more cautious on their material handling this is a nice little work table really like it has these clamps to hold the post in place it's a nice soft vinyl so it won't scuff the post up it is a Pegasus table Works W O R X. Works Pegasus. And you want to have a brush handy just so as you're making cuts on here and debris collects, you want to make sure you brush it off. I'm working on getting these brackets, these adjustable brackets, to fit properly on the vinyl siding something I want to point out that may be helpful to you 
this bracket, it's a little limited in its in its adjustment. It it won't come quite all the way up to level, and I really need that to move up a little more. But it stops right there. This is the same type of bracket. I modified it. Look how much swing I have now. I can I can take that way up. I'm trying to do this with one hand here. But see, there's plenty more than enough travel on there and I'm going to show you how to do that so let's have a look at these when you take this little half moon component off of there that's the one I've modified this is the stock bracket you will see right there see that little tiny plastic stop that's there see if I can point it out to you right there at the edge of my thumb there's a little tiny stop and uh, that little stop will bump against the edge of this as it swings around and stop it. What I did uh, so that that edge of that will not bump and stop is I took this inside of this bracket and I just took a little sharp knife and carve that stop off. Once you get that stop off there's nothing to prevent that little half moon from swinging all the way around. So before you take it off it'll go to about there hit the stop you're done. After you carve it off you can bring it like way around to about there. So hopefully if you run into that problem that will solve it for you. So we're getting close to having this first rail system installed. I just wanted to give you a heads up on a couple things. Weatherable sends you these little caps that will push in here, cover these holes, and these little snap caps that you press over the screws. It'll have a real nice look when it's all finished. These stairway brackets are fantastic. Uh, I thought that this would work well for my siding. As you can see that's kicked at an angle. This one isn't uh, screwed down yet. Another thing I like is these have these little beauty caps. They don't seem to snap on there as well as they should though, so I'll put a little silicone under there to hold that on. Uh, while we're down here, another thing I want to tell you is this bottom bracket, it did not come with screw holes and was not designed to have screws in it. But again, keep in mind, this was a bottom bracket for a stairway rail system. I found that because it didn't have screws in it, this wanted to rock a little bit. Even though I had this side screwed in, it was allowing this hinging mechanism to rock a bit. So I mounted a screw on uh, the top and both sides. And after you mount those screws, this system, if I can find one here, it comes with these neat little caps and it, they will snap right over those screws. But because these three were not designed to be here, I'm going to have to order some of those little snap caps to put on there. So, on this uh, top bracket, it does have a screw hole in there. So this was designed to have a screw in it. So it should have a little snap cap to go over that one. And uh, then I'll snap on the little beauty rims and everything will look great. It is 
pretty level up here on the top. So I'm going to draw these top holes, trace them, pull that top rail off, drill those holes, get everything finished up. So I had a hunch in looking at the brackets they had online that these stair rail brackets might work and indeed they have worked out beautifully. So they have a much smaller footprint. They allow the bracket to tilt backward and match the angle of the vinyl on the mounting side and on the rail side it allows this to tilt forward and level out with the rail. So if you're going to be mounting your rails to the house that's a little tip that may help you out. I now have the second rail system installed. This is over on the left side of the house. I'm real happy with the way that turned out. And I did put some extra screws around on the back bottom here to keep it stable. The vinyl repair looks fantastic. See if I can get in real close. You just cannot see where those holes were. So, love the way it's turning out. And we will get going on these final four that are going to go right along the front here. Those are all eight foot rails. These on the ends were six foot rail kits that were had to be cut down a bit. Unfortunately, because of the spacing between these vinyl slats, I'm having to cut all of these spindles down. About seven eighths of an inch. But it's going to be good. Everything will be cool in the end. I'm getting ready to install the 8-foot rail systems. They call these 8-foot rail systems, but they're actually about 7, 11, and 3 quarters. So I've been concerned about the install on uh, these couple of 8-foot sections. The ones down there are I think maybe like a couple of inches smaller, at least an inch or so smaller. And these two are right at, if not slightly over, eight feet. So because this is 7, 11 and 3 quarters, I'm a little shy. Thankfully, it's going to work out because these brackets, they will cover and once I center the available railing, I'm still going to have enough meat to grab the anchor screw down at the bottom of this mounting bracket. So I was sweating that. It was close, but thankfully this is going to work out. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. Something you may want to consider as you're leveling this bottom rail you may want to pop a bungee cord around there to snug that up just in case as you're moving it around and shimming under it to level it and such if you happen to accidentally bump this you don't want it popping off the edge of the porch and scuffing up on the cement there then you're back into wet sanding and you may or may not be able to get the scuffs out so that's just something you may want to do just to uh, safeguard against any accidents and still you know it's easy to raise it and use your level and get it leveled up 
Here's a couple of tips for you for leveling your rails, the bottom rail. I have a little block of wood under there and these are just some old coasters. I've had these around for a long time. Uh, just a little rubber deal that you put down to set coffee on and such. I just inherited a bunch of these things as I've gone along through life and I've saved those and they're probably sixteenth of an inch thick or so and it's nice to just start stacking those under your rail as you start leveling it up that'll allow you to take it up and down in small increments till you get it right where you want it another thing is if you have a, a little carpet square you can toss down to kneel on that will save your knees a bit uh, I like this little, it's kind of a thick, dense piece of carpet, and it is, um, I think, a like a, about a 13 by 18 sample. I have some, oh, 24 by 18s and probably 24 by 36, various size carpet samples that I use to toss around depending on the project I'm doing. This is a little level, little corner level that I got at Home Depot. This little vial right here in the center will pop out. You can then take a mini bungee cord, hook it around this little finger, run it up under this vial, bring it down under this finger. Then you can wrap it around whatever you want to level. bring this up hook it on this from the other side can't do it with one hand but you get the idea and it's nice you can just pick it up move it around slide it back and forth whatever uh, for me it works better than taping it and goofing around with that sort of deal so hopefully those are some tips that will be useful Sounds like uh, from the background noise, we're getting ready to take off to the next phase of this project. This post is so long that I got some help setting this in place. Have the bungee cord on there, keeping it in place. I'll be drilling the holes and screwing that mounting bracket in soon. It's level. Everything turned out nicely. But this is important. Because this upper handrail has the reinforcing aluminum H channel in there, I would strongly suggest that you cut a little piece of cardboard that's just a cereal box panel, thin cardboard, and tape it in place where the end of this channel is going to ride as you do your installation and I started putting the spindles in on this side so the channel was tilted downhill toward that cardboard that aluminum channel that runs inside here and that way if it does move around or slip a little bit it's not going to scar or score up your PVC post so once I had uh, everything in place all the spindles just laid the channel the uh, upper handrail with the H channel in it on there tilted it toward the cardboard started inserting the spindles on that side working it this direction and then you also want to make sure as you're doing this that you don't let it drift this direction in a, uh, a quick motion or swing back and forth this way have whoever's helping you keep this nice and secure over here last thing you want is that aluminum H channel to shift and score the face of your nice PVC post then once you get everything all the spindles in the holes you can pop these bungee cords on each end to kinda tie it in place until you can get in here and uh, equalize the space on each side of this 
mounting bracket, get your holes marked. Then I just bring this back. Uh, I will swing it out away from the post, drill my holes, take it back, screw it in, put in the plastic plugs, chickity boom, you're done. This rail is going on nicely, nice and level. Just want to mention one thing. When you're doing things like drilling this little retaining hole in the side, you may want to, uh, so that your drill doesn't get away as that hole pierces through and damage this vinyl in here, you may want to just get a little rubber pad and just sort of hold it around that drill chuck to kind of protect that so if it it lurches forward you don't scuff up that vinyl so the first eight foot rail system is now installed everything turned out nicely we will now move on to the next section I don't have a helper here right now and I want to get this top rail on here so this is how I'm going to go about this doing it alone I have my spindles if you recall I had to trim about seven eighths of an inch off the top of the spindles to keep all of my rails aligned properly so those are trimmed down I have the first two here and I have used a bungee cord, put a little wood block in there to hold it out. Have my cardboard in here to protect this post. And I will set that far edge right in here on top of that spindle. And hop it over here on this one. Make sure everything is level and lined up properly. I will then raise this side a bit as I start installing all of the rest of the spindles. But that's a way that you may be able to do this alone. I think this is going to work out for me. Using my wood block and bungee cord method worked. I was able to get this upper rail on alone. So this is a project you could do start to finish without help. Things are looking nice and level. cardboard has protected the post over here. You do want to make sure that that aluminum insert reinforcement that goes inside this rail, you want to make sure that that is um, a little bit shy so that it doesn't scuff anything up as you try to put it in. You know, maybe have it held back an eighth of an inch or so. I now have the right side of the house finished. All the railing is in, all the posts are in. Very happy with how it's looking so far. Now we'll get going on the other side, finish that up. If you're working alone and you need to pull a measurement, put a little duct tape over the tip of your tape measure. Use a quick grip clamp. Make sure the pads are clean, snug it down, come out to the edge of the post, pull it back. And we are going to be right close to 7 feet 5 inches. So that's how you can pull a measurement if you're working alone. You can also pull a pretty accurate measurement working alone with a little mini quick grip clamp. Just get your tape lined up with your mark. Pop the clamp down through a hole in the rail. Snug it down. Away you go. Just pull your measurement. I want it to be a 7.5 and I'm just a little shy of that, uh, which I want to be, which will give me 
just a little bit of clearance so that I'll have uh, a little to work with to get this rail in there. I now have the next to the last rail installed and we're getting close to the end of this project. I will now move on to this section that will finish this up. This is an old DeWalt DW920. Unfortunately I don't think they make these anymore. You may still be able to find one around. The downside is uh, they just have the old NICAD batteries. This was before lithium ion, so you, I mean, I, I bought extra chargers and batteries and things for it. Eventually, I'm going to convert that to a NICAD or a lithium ion, but for now, I'm kind of just switching out batteries and getting by. But the thing I love about it is I can get this little 964 drill bit. It has the um, little shank on here that will fit in this. You just pull this and uh, that chuck will release. This is a Milwaukee drill bit, or a, yeah, Milwaukee screwdriver bit. Um, and I just really like the way this thing works for this kind of a project because I can pop this drill bit in here and see if I can do that with one hand. What's great is because this chuck is back behind this, this little uh, tension setter allows that chuck to spin without hitting the vinyl and scoring it. So I can put this uh, uh, this uh, connecting bracket up on here, drill these holes, I marked them, made sure everything was level. I can bring this thing in and drill all four of these holes, leave everything in place, pop that off, put this long drill bit in, and get this one here. And that drill bit is so long, I can really get over here and drive that screw straight in. So that's snug down. And it, it just works out real well. So if you can get one of these old gizmos or something similar, or if you have something similar around, even better. But I find that that, that works great. If I were bringing in a drill motor, you know, they're, they're quite a bit bigger. You've got that big chuck spinning. It's going to wind up hogging into this PVC, which obviously would be disastrous. Uh, the other thing that I like is when I'm finished, uh, let me just snug this one down. Now I can pop this out, put the drill bit in, come over here on the side, put my little anchor screw in there, and it just really works out well. So hopefully you can find something that they're making these days that is similar. I would imagine that would be the case. Or maybe pick up one of these old dogs. Earlier I mentioned carpet samples and how they can be helpful. You put them under your knees as you're kneeling down working on these projects. You can also go to a carpet store and just pick up some remnants or samples and or if you've had a carpet job done and have a remnant left over you can just cut them up in little runners or strips I have a couple of them butted together here I use these I'll put them under cars and lawn tractors and things and, and lay on those to do work it can be helpful so on a project like this 
that's kind of a long span, it can be nice to have those little runners down so you can just sort of crawl back and forth on your knees and work on this without having to hop a smaller sample around all the time. Well this project is finally completed. It's been a fun project to do and I've really appreciated you folks coming along and sharing in this experience with me. Let's go up and do a final walkthrough. I have a few final thoughts about weatherables, PVC, posts and rails. Before we get into that, I just want to mention I also got tired of redoing that cupola all the time. I'd have to go up every year, scrape, patch, paint. I just really got tired of it. I had a wooden cupola up there for several years. Didn't take, I think only about four years or so after I put it up, started running into trouble with peeling and rotting and such. So I found this company, uh, the Amish are famous for beautiful wood products and high quality workmanship. This was a little company, I believe it's called Amish Country Products. And they made this nice vinyl cupola with a metal roof. And I put that up there and I've been really happy with it. I think I've had it about seven years or so. My days of going up on the garage roof, messing around, retouching up and patching and painting cupola is over. And uh, I'm not affiliated with the company, but I will have a link. I believe they're still in business. So I'm also not affiliated with USA Vinyl is the company and Weatherables is the brand. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. They're not paying me or compensating me for this. Uh, this is just fun stuff that we're sharing together. Do it yourselfers. And I've been really happy with the way this turned out. The quality, the fitting, all of these mounting brackets and things. I think they're just fantastic. I would give this company an A plus if they were a little more careful in how they handle this stuff. Uh, as I've mentioned before, some of it came in scuffed up and, and the handling was a bit rough. Uh, the other thing is the mounting brackets for these posts, top and bottom, they could increase the footprint on that by about five-eighths of an inch all the way around without interfering with the skirt trim and it would make it a lot easier to install those. However, um, even though I can't give them an A plus because of uh, better material handling and an improved mounting bracket for the post, I'm still going to give them an A because if you're willing to spend a little time cleaning up this material from the rough handling, to me it's really worth it. I think their, their quality and the look of this stuff is just fantastic. Also, as you know, we patched the vinyl. That turned out well from taking out the old rotted wood uh, that was in there, the old spindles. And these brackets are uh, stair brackets and they worked out great in that you know the angle that we can tilt back there to follow the angle of the vinyl that worked really well so everything turned out great let's come up here and have a look both directions That side of the house was the first side we did. Turned out great. We 
finished up over here. Turned out very nicely as well. So overall, I'm very happy with these folks. USA Vinyl and their Weatherables brand. And I would highly recommend these guys. I did have a problem with one of the little handrails for the small porch. It had a weird kind of a gray line running through it. And uh, they were fantastic. They shipped me right away at no charge, a replacement out. Their customer service is fantastic. Quality of, of their products is really good. So I would highly recommend Weatherables and USA Vinyl. I uh, will have some affiliate links to some of the stuff I used on this project down in the description. Those will be uh, links that you can use if you'd like. They'll be direct links that'll take you right to the product. It's, it's really nice that uh, we have the internet to share this information and help each other out. This was my first vinyl railing and post project. So we kind of learned together on this. I've really enjoyed having you along. And uh, we also have a little website, fixitforgetit.com. If you'd like to stop by, uh, we'll be building that out over time. We'll have some of our projects there. We'll also include uh, tips and things that other folks do that will be helpful to some of you. And we hope that you will like and subscribe and we really appreciate you coming along with us on this project thanks for watching